YouTube. We have a box. I think you're gonna like it. There's been a lot of people asking for this thing of late. But it's a scooter. Huh? But it's a scooter. It's gotta be an e-scooter. They haven't been asking for it. We that. haven't done a weed whacker in a while. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. So guys, we know you want this and we're glad to be bringing you the re-release of a much anticipated, unexpectedly discontinued previously, <laughs> annoyingly discontinued previously. <laughs> oh yeah, that is cool. EC1500, oh. that is so sweet. Cool. Okay, so no longer in the Nemo format, we are looking at a livery that's more like what we're used to seeing on a C-130 I like and that sort of thing. The camera crew really liked the Nemo finish. I did too. But, but the thing cool is, too. this one's really cool. Yeah. And so I can't wait, can't wait to see it. So here we go. Yeah, the floats will look really ridiculous on there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get this thing out of the box. You would think that I'd be better at this after having opened so many of these things. Yeah, we'll get there. Come on, come on. Awesome. Okay. So first things first on the rear of the box. Look at that amazing thing. You've got an opening hatch on the back so the paratroopers can jump out or candy or whatever it is you're dropping. And as you can see on the end here, what do you have? The AS3X and safe info. Yeah. So you've got that AS3X and safe. And then of course this has new smart technology so we're excited to see exactly how that works because we've seen some twins that have come from the e-flight line and so we're excited to see how this is going to work so without further ado we're going to get this thing out of the box right now if you guys are new to the channel this is brian phillips rc i'm brian phillips obviously and then the camera crew is my wife of many years megan she has a name yes i don't call her camera crew all the time we only do it to annoy the, the haters yes. and it does work because they complain a lot. You keep bringing it up. It's amazing. So we're gonna we, keep doing we it. We love it, we keep doing <laughs> it. So this thing is huge. As you can see, it just keeps going and going. If you can pull that off, that'd be great. Okay, so we're gonna close this thing so we can put it behind us in the backdrop in case you have questions, because we always do as we're building. And that looks sweet, I gotta say. Oh, wow, loving, loving it. Look at this pair. Oh. Now they redesigned these things, so they'll hopefully stay on better. Evidently some people had some issues with theirs. I never had a problem on ours. I still have mine intact downstairs. We had a problem on other brands. Well, yeah, we did. There's a bind plug in here. Why is there a bind plug in there? That's weird. Interesting. Okay, so we got the uh, EC1500 manual. Looks pretty cool. straightforward stuff from Horizon. Now this comes with different decals for different liveries. So you can set it up however you want. We'll actually go over that a little bit later, but let's get right into the plane. Carbon fiber joiner, and there is another one in here too. So keep that in mind. That one's for the horizontal stabilizer, and this one's for the wing. Look at that thing. Wow. Look how solid it is. That's crazy. Wait, hold some. <laughs> it's like the opposite of the RV8 we did the other day. That's nice. That was like a drinking straw. Yeah. This is like a steel rod. That is crazy strong. <laughs> and then this one is almost solid too. As you can see, it's a very thick sidewall. So pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna keep going here. This was in here kind of almost loose. I don't know what this is. I don't know if that's like a, supposed to be loose. I don't know what we're dealing with. Oh, these are skis. Oh, that is so sweet. Does it come with skis? I don't know. Well, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is supposed to come in here. But these, oh yeah, these are. These are skis. So they came with the first one and you can take the wheels off or I don't even know if you have to take the wheels off actually. But what that does is that allows you to fly off of snow which is super fun. Okay, so we've got the amazing Chinese throwing stars here. So you wanna be careful, don't throw them at your eye. And these ones 
our counter rotating prop. So it's going to be super pretty when we get to the other one. I don't know where the other one is though. Hmm. Okay, so this looks like there is a magnetic attachment point on the top. And that is because there is a point for cameras in a few different places. One's here, then the whole nose cone comes off. There's a bunch of different places. So if you like FPV, you can do some cool FPV on this right out of the box. And speaking out of the box, here's a horizontal stabilizer, which doesn't look very big. And that's because the body is so wide on this thing. So you can see just to get an idea of how big we're talking about. Look at this. So 1500 millimeters is 1.5 meters, as you guys know. But if you want to see how wide that's going to be, that's pretty, pretty big mm -hmm. tail section. Okay. So we'll just keep going along as we go. I got to cut some more stuff. Where did I lay the knife? There it is. Ooh, wait, I can get the vertical stabilizer. That is huge that is. and beautiful. So we have the servo in there. Everything is painted, beautiful finish. Really nice looking. Quick attachment point here. So then this of course dives into the fuse to make contact. Nice match on the, where they covered up. Oh yeah, really, really nice Good match. match. We sometimes see better than others. Okay, so we got some stuff in here. Got some adapter fittings. And I think these might be just different camera mounts. Okay. So those are different fittings. I don't really, oh, this is to adapt the ailerons. See how it says five and six? So you can do a full length flap -aron if you want. Oh. But I think they switched the technology on this one. I'm not sure. And so I don't want to say it yet, but I think I know what they did with it. Because if I remember right, they switched the receiver on this one. So being that we've got the NX-10, we might be able to do some cool new things. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Beautiful. Nice vortex generators here. Step in the wing here. Absolutely gorgeous. Really nice looking. Ball links. And yes, you don't have to put them on, which is really nice. I had problems with that on the first one I did. See, this is where that connection point is. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you can separate these out and do different things. You can have larger flaps. You can have larger ailerons. Okay. Did the Nemo version have LEDs? I think it did. Did it? I don't cool. actually now. I don't, it's been a I don't remember. Time. It's been a while since we've messed with it. There it is. Okay. So the other prop, and as you can see, they are counter rotating. So that's super cool. Okay, continuing down into the box here. Just kind of pulling stuff a little bit at a time. Ooh, the first blemish. We'll talk about that here for a second. See the blemish? Mm-hmm. Looks like probably some touch-up points. Possibly. Oh, you know what? That's just dust, guys. Dust. Sweet. Good. Looks really nice otherwise. Really pretty. Beautiful. Nice matte finish. Can't tell if that's spackle or if it's just dust. I think it's just dust. And let's talk about the plugs here for a second. You see this? This is a big bird. That makes it easier to take apart. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna take mine apart, but I am saying that if you have to take it apart, you wanna be able to take it apart. So that's nice, because this thing is big. And particularly the tail is tall. So if you take the tail off, it becomes a lot smaller airframe. All right, so this thing is a monster. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to get it out without damaging anything. A lot less foam to protect the foam than we're used to seeing. So, ooh, there's a screw in here. And the reason it's in here is because there's a magnetic point here. Oh. And so I want to take this and put it next to our screws just in case okay. that was supposed to be in there. <sighs> Looks like it might've been just a fluke, but I'm not sure. Okay, so let's get this thing lifted. Of course, I'm a big fan of the C-130 and the, whoa, that would have, oh yeah, look at that. Wheels on and everything, mm -hmm. ready to rock and roll. Now, some of you guys, when the first one came out, you were disappointed there weren't retracts. I can tell you this, on this plane, 
I can, I can tolerate these landing gear because they're just very basic and simple. And I don't have a big problem with that. I'd rather have retracts to be honest, but see how nice that is? These just slip on and they're super easy to put on and off. Cool. And you get that cool matching finish, which is awesome. Yeah. And look at that wing attachment point. Mm -hmm. By the way, this thing is so light, there's like nothing to it, which is crazy. Cause you'd think it'd be super heavy cause it's big. It's not, it's just very, very light. You know what's not light? The wing. The wing is actually pretty light. So check this out. Let's show you inside the canopy cockpit. Oh, I forget which way this goes. Oh yeah, it's back here. So that comes up and pulls out. Yep, AR 3860T. Nice. So you know what that means? We should be able to do some different wing type stuff. So that's gonna be very cool. And it's so weird, these things like always fall off. Ah, oh, man, it just fell off again, really son of a biscuit. And then I'm assuming that we don't have to do too much finagling to get thrust reverse set up. I have to assume we're gonna have thrust reverse on this because the last time we had a twin ESC from Avian, we did have thrust reverse. So we're gonna take a second, clean things up and come right back. All right, so the manual suggests putting in the vertical stabilizer first, along with some long screws, because all these screws are really big. So I'm just gonna lay this over and see if it's about the same size. Okay, so it's not that, I don't know if that's that size or if it's this size. I don't, that's pretty close. But they used to have this actual size thing going on, but we haven't seen that for some time. So I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick this on and show you how hopefully easy this goes. I am gonna put my canopy back into position. Okay. Got a little debris in ours. Okay, so this just slips in. And this is designed to come apart real easy and it really does. Okay, so this slips down like that. And there you have it. Just make sure that you get alignment on your plug. It's very easy to misalign, but now it's, it's aligned, okay? So you can see the screw holes are on your side, okay? From the camera's perspective. So now what we need to do is we need to get this pressed all the way down so we can see the screws. Yep, there it is, and there it is. All right, so now our next move is gonna be to find those screws. So which screws are they supposed to be? They say M324 countersunk self-tapping screws. These are countersunk, these are countersunk, these are countersunk. Those are not and those are not. So it's one of these three. Let's look at where the others are used. Looks like the four thumb screws go on the wing. So where the heck is the rest of the hardware used? This goes to the spinner or the spinners and motor mounts. Where the heck are all the rest of the screws gonna get used? Hmm. I can't tell. I can't either. But I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and have to measure to see because sometimes the only way to know is by measuring. All right, so let's pop this thing out. All right, turn the calipers on, make sure they're zeroed. And then what I wanna do is M324. So 24, that's 30. I was gonna say that seems too long. There's 24, okay. So it's gotta be these ones. So we'll just turn that off for now. And then a Phillips, I'm gonna go for like a four millimeter on that. Yeah, that should be about right. Let's just do this. Let's actually pull the tail up and we'll just bring it over here. And then I left one of the screws. That is a thick wing the cord of this vertical stabilizer is just wide, 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 which is cool. Super easy fit, going really smooth. Camera crew is gonna move to her left or right so she can get out of the, there you go. We have all that beautiful light coming in from the window. You need to block your view. And I'm just like noticing that there's ball link on everything and I don't have to do any of it. Yeah. The last time we built this plane, I had tons of problems. And you know what happened? I found out I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And then after we did a couple flights, I was like, I couldn't get the thing to work right. And then after that, about an hour into the video, I was like, holy cow, I've screwed this up something fierce. 
And so we went ahead and showed it in chronological order. And I fear that most of the people just assumed it was always bad. Well, after we figured that out, it's like, this thing is awesome. And that's pretty much what happened. So if you guys go back and rewatch that with the Nemo livery, then you can understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so that is a very good fit, very easy to put together. All right, so now the tail. You don't even use hardware on there? Nope, snaps in. What? That's bizarre. I don't know if I trust that. Let's see if I trust that. Okay. I never had the other ones fall off. Okay. So first things first, which one's up, which one's down? Well, it looks like the snaps are gonna go down. How do I know that? By guessing. Okay. I'm gonna try sliding this in first. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna slide this joiner rod onto the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Just get that alignment just so. Hmm, kind of, oh, there, you gotta kind of pull it back a little bit. And once it goes back, I'm catching somewhere else. There we go. Okay, I pushed up on the middle tab. Let me show the people, mm -hmm. pushing up. And then it just allowed it to slip in and snaps. Boom, that actually worked really <laughs> good. Okay, so same thing here. Okay, in you go. Pushing back just a hair toward the tail of the aircraft. And there it is. Guys, that is, that is so easy. And then this sleeve acts as the elevator adapter. So that is, crazy. That is pretty amazing. I, oh, I love the way it looks without anything on it. I'm so torn. I always say that and then I put decals on a plane and I'm like, I love the way it looks better. Yeah. So let's just curb your enthusiasm for a minute here, Brian, about the uh, blank canvas. And let's get this giant rod out. Holy Ooh. cow, that thing is crazy. Okay, so this one does take screws, okay? Mm -hmm. But I mean, even this, if you were to take two screws out, the vertical stab comes off and it's a pretty small plane at that point. And the vertical stabilizer is big on this plane though, admittedly. For being a 1.5 meter, it's pretty tall. Okay. And it's funny because it's almost like a mid-wing plane because even though it's on the top of the fuse, it's just such a tall plane. I mean, look how tall this is from the countertop. Yeah. It's covering this whole area, that's, that's big. So I know the timber is big, but the timber is a tricycle, so it falls back. Same is true when you store this or you transport this, you can push the tail down. So it does help to make it take up a little bit of space, but honestly taking those wings off, if you're only gonna be in it, one, two, three, four, five, six screws, four of which are thumb screws, that's a pretty big deal. Now, before we get any further, let's talk about this wing type, okay? If you want long flaps, you can connect these together here. Or if you want long ailerons, you can connect them together here. I want long flaps, so before I forget, let's do this. These things are supposed to just pull over, right? I'm not sure how those actually come out. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it because- Do you like pinch them together with the little tabs? You know what? I think, I think they just slip off according to the drawings. Oh. But if you show them on the drawing, they're supposed to go down and in, down and in. So do they go up and out, like toward the center? Okay, so I'm pulling like this, like that direction, and I'm supporting it on the side of the control surface. Oh man. Those things are challenging to get out. Oh boy, there it is. See how that goes? You got the hook that goes back this way. So it's gonna drop in and snap, okay? So I'm gonna undo that. Then I'm gonna kind of work this down so I can get my finger in here. Ooh, that's scary. That's scary, it's not like breaking or anything, but it just, ugh. I don't like that process very much. And then now what I need to do is I need to look at the numbers. It says four and three. So then let's come over. Well, you can stay there. I'll come back. Okay. These were in the box. 
four and three. See, four and three. Okay, now do not ever run them together like this. And you're like, but what if I want a full length aileron? If you want a full length aileron, fine, undo this and this, and you're done. Yeah, but Brian, I want a full length flap. Okay, fine, undo this and take it out. But why would you do that, guys? I mean, you can do some cool stuff with the programming on this transmitter. So my suggestion is, if you wanna do something fancy, do it in the transmitter. Now, you'll notice that there's nothing driving this. So you have to make a decision how you drive that middle panel. It's either driven by the aileron or it's driven by the inboard flap, okay? So my suggestion is, I want this thing to be a huge scale Warbird and not a jet fighter, okay? But it's already gonna fly with a crazy jet fighter presence. And I remember back when we did this before, it's been a long time now, but I remember this. I remember thinking to myself, I think you could do it either way and be happy. But I just love flaps. It's like one of my things. It's like if there was such a thing as an RC fetish, that'd be mine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just grabbing a Phillips screw, or excuse me, a flat screwdriver so I can pop this thing out a little bit. It's just, I'm just gonna lift it, okay? And then this one here, I can push this down now, maybe. Yep, there we go. Little bit of slop in there. And see, I'm just pulling really hard with my fingernail and then pressing up against here. Oh, that is awkward as all get out. I'm gonna sit down so I can get the right angle. Okay, I'm gonna try pressing this down onto the table so it's resting in the wing. That's so mean to the servos. Okay, I'm gonna take this flat screwdriver. It's been sort of sharpened a couple of times by yours truly. And I'm gonna put it into here and I'm just gonna give it a little tap, tap, tap a -roo. I wanna see if that helps. It does not seem to help. Oh, that's such a nasty feeling. Cause it's, it's definitely, you can see the way it works. It's just, it just slides in and I can't tell how it snaps, but there's definitely some thickness there. I'm just not sure exactly where it is. Mm, I, do not, I do not like doing this step. This is the sort of step that makes me nervous. Oh, there it goes. Went over went up, okay? Flipping it upside down for orientation. Then I'm gonna take this and just go straight up with it while supporting. Now you can see it says one and two. It's really small and indented. One and two, and then down here, one and two, okay? So hang on to this if you would ever change your mind on how you wanna fly your EC1500. Now keeping in mind, what I'm going for might be different than what you're going for, but we do have an eight channel receiver that's got all sorts of bells and whistles built into it that we didn't have before, okay? So just keep that in mind, seriously. Now, before we get any further, I'll go ahead and slide this wing on and then I'll slide that wing off. Okay. Because if I were to fly this plane right now, it would have some crazy, <laughs> crazy roll rate when I put on the flaps. That would be... It would not be good. Not good. Because I have it done both ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this in, get it into the position. I'm gonna hold all the way under here like this and hug the plane and pull it in. Now it's tight. Now I'm gonna take this wing back off now that we call oh, that so dang gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is so beautiful. It's huge. I love it. It's beautiful. All right, here we go, guys. Let's go ahead and pull this one out now. So we're gonna do the exact same operation as we did before. This time I'll start here. I'm gonna try using my other finger. Oh, that is like just a really bad feeling. It's like I feel like we're on the cusp of breaking something. And I just want you guys to get a load of the, the way the flaps are hinged. That is so beautiful. It's got this uh, slot to it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I hate to say slotted flaps because I don't know that they're actually slotted flaps. They just happen to have that slot built in there. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that is a terrible, terrible noise. Terrible and scary noise. Because I know the consequences of screwing this up could be pretty bad. And I wanna fly this thing bad. 
and the weather is semi cooperative today. I can't tell if we're going to get to fly or not, but this build is going so dang smooth. I'm really hoping we get to fly in the sun and then we get to fly at sunset too, or maybe a little bit of both. But we have to get ourselves ready to get to Joe Nall. So if you guys are seeing this, you're probably thinking, well, wait, wait, Joe Nall happened a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's normal. Because when we do these early releases, we always, well, we don't always, we usually don't. But sometimes we get time to have the videos prepared in advance so that they're ready to rock and roll. And so we're very fortunate to be in a position to do that. If you want to help us do it, what you can do is smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, be part of our regular audience that routinely watches our stuff. And then if you want to help support us financially for the efforts that we put into this, which is quite a bit behind the scenes, you can buy the planes from the links. That also helps us to build clout with the different companies that we work with. And yes, they are, make no mistake, competitors. So when we work with a bunch of different companies, we are in a good enough position with most of these companies now to where they understand that's just part of it and that we serve you, our audience, and not them. And so that's what we try desperately to do and strike the balance between bashing Dynams and praising every other brand that we've used pretty much because they've all been better. Okay, Dynam has its place. It does, don't send us hate mail about Dynam. Dynam has its yeah. place. <clears throat> <laughs> yes. We have seriously had so many problems with Dynams though, but I did actually really, they had a couple that were okay, like the DC-10 was okay. And if you really love to like build and yeah, tinker and, and fix, completely redesign, yes. then you'll love Dynams. If you love to spend hours trying to find the correct hole to stick things in, but you will love Dynams. Some people do. Yeah, I mean, you'll be so, you'll be, well, I was just gonna say, mm -hmm. camera crew, keep it contained. We're supposed to be good. Don't need anybody calling and getting anybody fired again. All right, so as you can see, we have flaps. Beautiful, huge, gigantic flaps, smaller ailerons, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in. Man, that is so gorgeous. I was a little bit disappointed about the lack of Nemo, but then I'm like, wow, that is so good. All right, here we go, guys. So for those of you that have been repeatedly asking us, when are they gonna re-release? <laughs> When are they gonna re-release? Well, now you've got yeah. your answer. That The time is now. now today. And so order it because what's gonna happen is if they re-release some of these where people scream and holler yeah. and then people don't buy them, guess what happens, guys? <laughs> they get canceled as quick as they get put out, uh, which is unfortunate, but true. And we heard that with the Carbon Z T28. And to be honest with you, it's been, I believe, selling like crazy. And it's a beautiful plane and I love it. It's one of my favorites. Um, and I know you guys always ask, what's your favorite plane? Yeah, one of, not. I love so many different planes, but I can tell you one thing I really do like. I mean, one of my true favorites has gotta be the Carbon Z. Push right there, just a little bit. Okay, got it, it's done, done. You can let go. Okay. Yeah, if you had to, you know, say, hey Brian, your house is burning down, kids are safe, camera crew is out, what plane do you run in after? Well, I probably wouldn't run in after planes, but I would, uh, well, maybe, right. maybe a couple. What I would do is I would probably go for the Carbon Z Cessna T28. Still wrong. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, I just never <laughs> could get it right. It's so annoying. It's right there, that one. That one, the yellow one. <laughs> I totally know what it is too. Uh, but honestly, if I got the Cesta 150T or if I got the uh, Carbon Z Cub, I would be happy. Because like, honestly, the there's some Carbon Z favorites. planes you would get. Huh? Those are all the biggest planes you have to like. I know, I know. But the thing is, they're, they're just so dang good. This one, I'm kind of having trouble finding the hole. Do you need help? I don't know yet, to be honest. I, I honestly do not know. I don't know if I caught like a little chunk of foam on the way in or what the deal is. But I'm just like, it's so dang hard to tell if you've got proper alignment or not. And you, you'd like to think this would be an easy step, but maybe it's not. Okay, so I'm gonna put my finger in the canopy and just kind of lift up on it. Now, that's not a good way to do it. Do it over here. Uh, nope, I can't get my hand in there. I was just double checking. I wanted to knock that off the list of things to worry about. So real quick while we're fighting this screw, 
You guys are probably wondering what that is. I mentioned it earlier. This is the one of the many spots where you've got a oh, point for a camera, awesome. okay? And it's, it's, it's also removable up here too, if I remember right. This one's a little harder to get off because you have to, oh, yeah. Nice. So kind of wish it would have painted that gray. Although I Inside. think the paint would have made the, the foam pieces stick together. So anyway, as you can see, oh, and we didn't talk about battery size because we were off camera clean up boxes. This is a 4,000, this is a 4,000 4S, okay? Tip it on the side there, there you mm -hmm. go, okay? And we're using the S155 charger. So if you guys are looking for a plane that's high performance, that is not gonna take a crazy expensive battery, this is a great one. That's true. But also, I want to use parallel 3200. These are 50 Cs, you, you don't need 50 Cs, I just happen to have 50 Cs. And uh, I wanna use those too on this plane because you can use some massive battery action in here. This 5000 4S is also good. My only complaint with the 5000 in this environment is that if you look, we have an EC5 to an EC3, okay? So yes, there are some adapters and shouldn't be that big a deal because if you guys have chargers, there is a high probability that you already have this type of charger adapter, okay? So this cable is a pretty common adapter for people that have any smart batteries, okay? So I have those that I wanna work through and I think I've got a parallel cable. So we're probably gonna try to fly them on all these batteries. So on this one, since I've got this one sitting here, we'll go ahead and get that plugged in and charge. If you guys haven't bought a smart charger yet and you're just still using uh, dumb, for lack of better terms, batteries, there's nothing wrong with using dumb batteries, it's just there's a lot of extra value in the smart stuff. Task timeout, don't be giving me that. If you ever get task timeout, I'm gonna tell you what happened. The system got out of order in its stack, okay? So it means you probably plugged it in before it was actually booted, okay? When that happens, I usually just power cycle, and then once it comes up, you have to wait a second, which is annoying, admittedly, because sometimes you can do that and other times you can't. Then plug in the battery and you can get it started and it should be no problem, as you can see it's going. So hopefully you guys don't see that problem a lot, but I do from time to time because I get into trouble because I'm like doing six things at once. Okay, so back in with this and we gotta figure this out, okay? So when you have a screw that won't line up, usually what I do is I grab the belly of the beast and then I pull on the wing and it usually is enough to get it going. You wanna try pushing it down? Then I have the camera crew try. She just doesn't feel Ooh, like it's no, biting. It doesn't. It's like, I can't tell where it is. The other so, one's dropped down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo my other end, okay? And I must say, on all the things about this plane, I've been really happy with the fitment on. This is not so hot right now. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Can we go the other side so I can Nah, you? nah, I'm gonna undo this plug. See, it's not wanting to pull out. I wonder if we already have some of a purchase there as it is. I'm gonna pull this out. I'm just gonna take my screw and I'm gonna put it in here and see if it goes, okay? Uh, it's definitely going. So I don't really have any concerns about that. So maybe I'm just gonna try again and see if we get lucky this time. Okay. I'm gonna start with the front hole this time. Okay. Okay, so I don't have purchase yet, so I'm gonna just take my elbow can't tell why it's fighting me on this one. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take a screwdriver that's small. Usually we can get this with a small Phillips because it's got that pointed tip. And if it will fit, it usually helps us get the alignment we need. I really can't tell why it's not dropping for us. There it goes. I felt like maybe it pulled into position. Let's try it again. Are all these the same length? Yes. They are, for mm -hmm. sure? Oh, mm -hmm. I got it. Got it that time. Not much penetration. Are you sure they're all the same length? 100%? I thought they were. Yeah. Okay. If they're if they were the same length, then they're the same length. See, drop down. Did it? 
I don't think I said that. Yep, there, there it is. Okay, so once it slips down in, you're gonna be biting plastic at first, and then you'll have the nylock down below. Or not nylock, but you're gonna have some sort of a nut zert. I can't exactly see it, so I shouldn't say. Now I'm gonna grab a flat screwdriver just to see if I can turn these in a little easier. The first couple of times on these wings, you usually get a little bit of crushing there. And that's unfortunate. And these are nylon screws, so be careful. I am holding both sides with my fingers. You wanna know why? So the screwdriver doesn't slip off. Like that, and I was still trying to be careful. It didn't damage it, but I usually do. So now I'm gonna go three fingers. Boy, that is like a flimsy that screw. One is not Goodness going. gracious. No, it's going. Is it? Yeah, it's just that it's never actually gotten alignment. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. The camera crew is gonna help me turn that in real quick if she can. Is it going for you? I don't think so. It's just spinning. Okay. It's not just spinning though. I just don't think we have a purchase on the threads. See, look at my threads. Mm -hmm. Those threads are toast. You had it all the way in no, there. Those threads are toast. Wait, look, so those threads are toast. Oh. Okay, so now new question, new question. How, did they get toasted just now or did they come toasted? Hmm, that's a good question. I think what needs to happen is I think we need to have a conversation with RTL fasteners. Oh yeah, RTL fasteners to the rescue. Get out here, RTL. Get ready to take a bow. Let's see if we got what we need. They actually have these black anodized ones that would look nice. I just don't know if they're gonna have the length we the need. right size. Mm, even with all these sizes. Mm -hmm. You know what? Maybe, maybe we do, maybe we don't. It should be a three by 20. No, wait, <gasps> I was wrong. What? They are two different lengths. Ugh. They're a 20 and a 16. Oh my goodness. So they're very slightly different. The shorter ones should be in the no back. No wonder this wing was easier because I used the longer ones in you this used... wing. I used both of the long ones in this wing. Sorry folks, sometimes we miss them. So that one's out now. Let's see what happens. So that should be a shorter one. It, it probably already is the shorter one. Yep. Yep. So we used the right ones and the right holes that time. Uh, no, this one needs to go to the back. Mm -hmm. That's why, but it's toasted. So I have no idea if that's gonna work now. It may just be a pin now. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, now that we know what's going on, you guys can learn from my screw up. Oh, it's going in, it's going in fine. How the heck can it go in fine still? I just like looked at the threads, they were all toasted. Whatever, good enough for me. So at the end of the day, guys, is there ever a time, see the difference? Yeah. Okay. So if there's ever a time when you're flying and you're in a complete flat spin, and you've got like so much tremendous amount of torque on your wing that the wing can slide off the end of the shaft and break both of these, then you'll be in big trouble. So I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Probably not. No, you can't actually flat, flat spin this, this, I think. Yeah, I think I flat spin it. That would be really awkward. It is very fun and amazing. Okay, so RTL, sorry to let you down. RTL, you don't need to make an appearance. You're going back in the drawer. That's why you read oh, it's directions. So sad. Huh? That's why you read the, the directions. What? Well, you're the one that read the directions. I didn't read the directions. I just looked at the screws. <sighs> okay. Okay. All right, so the next move. We've done this, we've done that, we've done the other things. Okay, cargo door operation. Hmm. Differential thrust. It is equipped with differential thrust. Okay. So we have to do some assembly of the motors. No, we don't. Yes, we do. We have to take these apart in order to even put them on, okay? So let's go ahead and just see if we can figure this out. First things first, there is a left and a right, okay? If you look at those, they're opposing one another. See how they're scooped from the center out? I don't know if they're marked. On the twin otter, 
that we just did not too long ago. Or wait, was that the Twin Otter? No, it was the, the, twim twimber. the Twimber. The Twimber had red and green, which was really helpful. This one, I'm trying to figure out if I can tell which way the props are gonna go. Cause these are, that's this one, okay. So this one goes, no, uh, nope, it goes like this. It's actually kind of hard to figure out. Yep, this one goes together and then this one goes together, okay. So once you've got those two things close, then you can start the assembly process. I'm just gonna move this stuff forward the nut and bolt sacks out of the way. What is this screw for? That's the one that was stuck to the hatch on the okay. fuse. Okay. All right, so we gotta disassemble these before we can get them assembled, okay? So in order to disassemble this, we need a Phillips. Okay, so we'll just grab into this amazing organizer that somebody made for himself out of garbage. <laughs> That'd be me. In all his free time? Whatever, it took me like 10 minutes. I should have done it 50 times up by now. Sure, we weren't supposed to be like eating dinner or doing anything. Okay, so you see this? So that is going to key into this. That's weird. What the heck? It's not gonna allow the prop to like pivot? I can't tell. That's very strange. Okay, so then this gets screwed in to you see what I'm talking about? Like, mm -hmm. we have to bolt this onto the motor first. This is weird. Okay, so this comes off first. Okay, this comes off first. We know that there's also a washer, so we can build this assembly in reverse order. So we're just gonna stack it on top of itself like that. Okay, then this is gonna lift. Oh, that goes this way. That goes this way, doesn't it? Because I was going to say, how the heck else would, wait, that's five. Five points. See this? Five points? Boy, that drawing sucks. Look at the drawing with me, camera crew. I can tell there's four screws that go through here. That's very obvious, okay? Mm -hmm. So these four screws go in here. That part's not confusing at all. What is a little bit confusing and off-putting is how exactly, okay, so now I need to get one of these. 2.5. 2.5? Mm-hmm. Okay, so 2.5, got it. I would say the little, like. You're blocking the screen for me. go out. Okay. What are you talking about? What little bumps? On, on that little black it. piece. On that black piece? I'm not worried about that at all. That's the engine, that's the motor. Okay. This is the adapter. Mm -hmm. Then on top of the adapter, this goes on, which this is the way it came, okay? And admittedly, it's pretty obvious this has to be this way because it's got that little groove to catch the spinner, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. My concern is now, I guess when you go down like that, then you've got this flush on there, so we should be fine. And then the pressure is exerted through those teeth but then how does this go? See what I'm talking about? <laughs> that is so weird. So there's two, there's a whole range of alignment options. So I don't know if that's designed to allow it to, to slip under high torque load for thrust reverse or what the deal is. But you can see that is not gonna hold it tight, tight, tight. Very weird. Different assembly guys, so something new for us. All right, cool, so we're just gonna lay this down we don't need that yet, we don't need this yet, we don't need that yet, but that's the order it's gonna go. So we do need this, then of course this, and then that. Woo! Okay, so we need this and we need that. All right, did they say anything about Loctite? Because this is metal on metal. So the spinner cannot slip, okay. All right, we're just gonna do it too, guys. We're gonna do it right now. Okay, so here goes nothing, guys. All right, so camera crew is gonna go to the left so that she can not block the light and also give you a shot of this, which is gonna be a challenge. Just, okay, so right here you go. Can you hold your hand right here so it blocks and chocks the wheel? Mm -hmm. Then I can press against it, thank you. That's perfect, perfect. Okay, keep doing that for just a minute until I get a couple of you started and then I can reach, reach up. 
Oh yeah, pretty easy stuff, guys. Now, keep in mind, you won't have to do this every time you go to the flight field, because if you take your wing off, you're just undoing two thumb nuts and you pull this wing out and you're done. And this wing is disassembled and you're gonna have multiple pieces that come out. Obviously, for shipping reasons, they have taken the props off, okay? Okay, so now it wants to spin. So how am I going to resist that? I think what I'm gonna do is I'll have to probably get a pair of needle nose pliers. There may be a better tool for this. Can you give them a shot from back here, please? Okay, so this is gonna allow us to hang on, see? And then I can torque the screw tight, move the, the tool. I'm not left-handed, so this is very awkward for me. I should have grabbed backward. Okay, tighten. Now I can switch hands. Makes it easy to torque these down now, because otherwise the motor will just continue to pivot as you torque. Okay. Now that that's done, all right, those are sufficiently tight. We're gonna lay this down because we're gonna need it in just mere moments. Keep this by the front so we can plug in our battery. And then what we need to do is assemble this one piece at a time. It should be pretty quick and easy process, okay? So this is not, whoa, 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 whoa. Wow, why do they do that? That's so weird. Look, it's machined on both sides. But it looks like the dents are the front, okay? Just imagine a samurai sword, like that. Okay, slide that back, get it to seat all the way, and then take your flat washer, your nut, and then your spinner, and I've got a screwdriver as well. Now this is something you have to be careful to do right, because here, if you don't do it right, you may have a prop spin off on you, and that's a mess. Okay, so this one is gonna turn in like that and I wanna look at the diagram just to verify we're good. And yep, they both turn in toward the top of the fuse. So as it comes in, it, they're gonna go like this, okay? Verified, it shows that in the manual. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and use a crescent wrench, okay? Just a sizable wrench. This is most definitely not a crescent wrench for those of you tool aficionados out there. This is a non-crescent crescent wrench. <laughs> it is a sizable wrench. Okay, so just holding the blade of the very, very sharp prop. Biting down on it here and just giving it a twist. Holding down here with my thumb. See how I'm pu pushing hard and then torque. Spread it across a large part of your hand so you don't slice yourself, okay? All right, so there's that. We're gonna slide this down on there, let that find a purchase point. And then I'm gonna take my screwdriver, pick up the screw, drop it into the tip, and let it fall on the table again. This would be a counter, by the way. Now, I'm, again, I'm not left-handed, but the camera crew has picked a left-handed view, so I'm going to switch back to my right-handed side. There we go. This is not big enough. I need to get a bigger one. Number three, three millimeters is not quite big enough. I'm gonna go to four millimeters. Now, this particular screwdriver set comes from Tom. Thanks, Tom. Um, one complaint is that instead of being sized like every other Phillips screwdriver that I've ever had, it's sized in millimeters. Like nobody sizes Phillips in millimeters. True. Sure. They size them in numbers. So it's like Phillips zero, Phillips one, Phillips 1 1.5, Phillips 1 point, you know, two, Phillips three, Phillips two. And those were from Rick. Oh, those were from Rick. Yes. I'm sorry. These, sorry. Tom, Tom, Tom those Rick. Those were from Tom. Those are These from, are yes. from Tool Shop Menards, Menards, guaranteed for life to fail, okay? So we're gonna pause. We are gonna do the exact same process on the other side so nothing changes. If we run into a problem, we'll come back. All right, so we got both of the counter-rotating props on, spinners and the assemblies tightened. Everything should be good to go. And now what we need to do is we're gonna talk real quick about this because we mentioned it earlier, but in the unbox, it's kind of hard to visualize, okay? 
So these skis are super easy to put on. What you do is you just kind of open them up and they just snap around. So if you decide to use them, really fun feature. And it's super easy to use because all you have to do is just snap these things on, okay? So you slide one side on and then you slide the second side on and then you just kind of press them in and you're done. Uh -huh. So very, very easy to put on at the flight field. And if you want to fly off of snow or ice or something of the sort, then this is your ticket. Now, that being said, we also want to talk about the float adapters because some of you guys are going to be confused by what the heck they are. And yes, of course, the manual outlines a lot of this stuff, but most of you that are watching this are men and you don't want to read the manual. I'm one of them. <laughs> so right here, so these are the mains. They're a little bit harder to put on because they have four contact points instead of just two, okay? These are the adapters that allow you to put your floats on. You'll notice that there's pass-throughs here. Okay, so those hold uh, horizontal struts. And then this thing replaces the nose gear and that you can do your steerable nose gear will become a steerable linkage holder. So it holds a string and then that runs. Or not so much a string as much as a, a linkage, a rod or control rod. Okay, so that runs your water rudder. Now that being said, keep in mind, this plane has differential thrust and regrettably with the programming device, you can actually program in thrust reverse as well. So on water, this thing is gonna be golden, okay? Keep in mind, there's gonna be thrust angles to deal with and different stuff. You know, if you end up in the bush and you need to pull it back out, this might be your ticket. So we've got this tool there if you need it. And then of course, you'll need the programmable transmitter with the available channels. Okay, so now that we've reviewed that, we're gonna actually pick things up and move them off camera for just a quick sec. Oh, these screws. These screws are used to actually tighten these in because you have to reach through a lot of foam to get to the backer, okay? So we're actually gonna do this like what we normally do on these planes, is we will actually take all this goodness and we're just gonna throw it into the bag. And then what that does for us is later on, when we're looking for the parts feverishly trying to find them, and we're like, oh no, what did we do with that thing from that one plane? Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll be in the box of other things from the other plane. Our cat just went after a bird. I don't know if they'll see her in the background. She's yeah. up on the deck. <laughs> She's right quite the killer. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pick this stuff up and we'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna put the decals on this thing and we just wanted to give you a quick rundown on what's available. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is everything you're gonna get, but this is what we got, okay? Because sometimes the early samples, the, you know, there's something missing here and there. This, what they did on the box is probably what we're gonna go with. Um, I'm assuming U.S. Air Force is what we're going to go for. So we're probably going to do that, but they have U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Air Force, Marines, Army, Navy, Numbers, the Horizon ho Hobby stuff, Spectrum stuff, Safe, and then Rescue stickers. And then this thing says Danger Ejection Seat. Well, that's mm. pretty cool. I didn't know they had ejection seats that's in here. Important. So anyway, we're going to work on that for a minute. And honestly, why don't we do one just so you can see how they go on and then we'll pause and kind of set up the rest of them and show you how it turned out because decals are decals, you know, it's not rocket science, but I do want to show you if they're bad. Uh, sometimes decals are bad. Sometimes decals are great. And these decals are very shiny. Ooh, that I'm not a fan of. Is that not cut? I can't tell, is that not cut? That's kind of a big decal, but that is the way it's supposed to be, it looks like. Um, okay, so if that's the case, they have theirs right here, splitting the difference of the Vortex generators. So I'm gonna just follow along here. Now, the tough part is, I, I think this, this plane is loosely modeled after another plane, but I don't remember what it is, <laughs> and I feel kind of embarrassed. Uh, because this is kind of a cartoon plane, let's call it. Uh, it looks like a real plane, but it's not quite the same. So I'm assuming it's not a licensed replica or they would have that all over the box. Horizon is really good about following the rules and things like that. And so when they do a licensed replica, they're actually paying royalties to these companies. So in this case, it's probably better that it's not. So we'll go ahead, that high quality thick stickers but shiny, a little disappointed about that. Shiny, it's very shiny. So now we're gonna do the US Air Force over here. 
and it looks like they just kind of split the difference again with the vortex generators, this seam here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the heck is that? Is it Matt? Wait. Wait a second. Is that Matt? Is this actually Matt? And we just... Is there like an overlay? I can't figure this out. If that's an overlay, I'm gonna be super bummed. It's because I don't know what is going on here. Because do you guys see what just happened there? When I pull this off, no, I just think that it just didn't peel. But the thing is, this is sticky. So like, I'm not sure what, what to do here if I'm supposed to not stick this stuff down. Because if that's the case, then that means I just stuck a huge oversized piece of plastic on my airplane that I shouldn't have. You see what's going on? There, it grabbed it, guys. Look, we got clingers here. Do you see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That could be sweet. Because you remember I was saying how it's really shiny and I don't like that? This might be the answer to that problem. Ooh, that S is gonna suck to get off of there. Oh no, it ripped, son of a biscuit lover. Eh. Okay, so I gotta get a little creative here for a second and see if I can fix that. I'm gonna get an X-Acto knife and see if I can fix it with the X-Acto knife. So the exact the exacto knife is going to allow this to come up and release. Oh, come on now. Ooh, there it is, guys. There it is. Okay, cool. That's probably close enough and as close as it's gonna go. But how do you I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure. I'm still going to just try to put it on here and see what happens. I'm going to just press really hard on the sticky part here. And I'm going to see if I can get them to delaminate from the clear. That would be super cool if that was the way it worked. But I love this style if that's really the way it's going to work. Because then once we stick that down, can I then... Oh, I lost the edge! Oh yes, that is so sweet, guys. Oh, that is so nice. I don't even know if that's supposed to work that way. It's like a vinyl decal. Oh, that is so sweet. That's crazy. Okay. Oh yeah, that's now that's really, really good. good. <laughs> okay, awesome. So you see, guys, you got this like clear thing, and that's where the sticker was. Your transfer. Tape. So now. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned that maybe this has a little bit too much stickum going on. If it is, oh, 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 buddy, oh, buddy. Those are nice stickers, guys. I am like really glad we reviewed this part now because like I would have been so bummed Careful of that with your bare feet. Mm -hmm. So if you get over here, you can just give a little double-sided tape rub there. <laughs> that is so nice. You remember my complaint about shininess? Forget about the claim, complaint about shininess. Wow. What a cool detail, guys. That That's is cool. sweet. <laughs> okay. All right. That, it's, it's unusual that we get surprised because we've been doing this so long. But we were surprised and happy to see that. All right, cool. We're going to get the decals on. We'll come right back in just a minute. Yes, we got the decals on. Holy cow, it was a lot of decals. <laughs> so normally we don't pay tribute to these type of stickers, but I was able to get them to look cool, I thought. So anyway, these are real decals on a real, what's this thing called? A C27? It's not actually that thing, but it looks a little bit like it could Similar. be. Similar. You could, you could imagine what it'd be like if it was. <laughs> so we put stickers here and here and here and here and here and here that are not scale. And then here and here, the Spectrum, the Safe, the Horizon and the E-Flight. Okay, ordinarily we wouldn't, but they actually did a pretty cool job of making them black on, you know, 
mat. And so I thought, okay, let's do it. And we did all the rest of these and I thought it looked pretty sweet. We did not have any instructions and then look on the bottom. We did as close as we could figure out based on reality, okay? So don't hate me because I put them in the wrong spot. You don't have to put them in the same spot, but I will tell you this, I had a number of decals that ripped up on me. So I had to get a little bit creative with my S. <laughs> it looks like it's got a little junk in the trunk going on here. <laughs> So that was a five that Let's turned into the bottom of the S. Let's see from back here. And then over here, I need to take a marker and touch up one more spot. You see how it says mm -hmm. US? Let's go over here and I'm gonna show the people how I'm gonna fix this. It's gonna be amazing, miraculous. Wow, amazing. Wow. Holy cow, that looks That's so smart. That is amazing. Wow, look at that. Okay, so just warning. The decals, while being high quality, are challenging to put on. You need to be careful when you pull that backing off. You have to press really hard to get them to transfer. And then once you get them on, you have to press really hard again and they still just like, there's barely more tack on the permanent decal. All right, so continuing onward, does it not look sweet? It does look it sweet. It does look sweet, okay? And yes, if this was like the real deal, the wings would be slender and long and this would be stretched out just a hair, but it looks pretty good, so I love it. And also on the real one, it does not have counter rotating props, which is kind of crazy, I think. So let's throw this over here. Also on the real one, the wheels only squat in. They don't actually totally go in like on a C. Well, on the bigger ones, the bigger ones. Just... Oh, wait, on a C-130? Yeah, C-130, oh. yeah. Uh, Cause those ones go all the way in. These ones just squat. They go in like halfway. Oh. And then the nose gear would retract on the, the Spartan. So, all right, so we are gonna flip the plane upside down. Ugh. We're gonna mark the CG. I wanna warn you guys about something. I just remembered it as I was getting ready to lay this down. You do have to hang this off the table on a plane stand. Uh, if you're not careful, you'll hit your tail on the table or countertop. So in our case, what we need to do now is we need to mark the CG. So the CG is at 65 to 75 millimeters back from the leading edge in board. So, we're gonna grab a marker. It's gonna be kind of awkward to I know. test. Yep, and if I recall, this thing is really not picky, but 65 to 75, correct? Mm hmm Okay, so 65, you're not just being agreeable, that's actually right. No, I, I read it. Okay, so I 65 to 75. Dang it, there's plastic there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go out here where there's not plastic. I'm gonna go in line with the servo and press, okay? Then I'm gonna come over here, still at 65. It is awkward to mark this one. In line with the servo is on plastic. So I gotta come out here, which is about an inch out from the nacelle, okay? And then I'm gonna go to 75. So if you guys didn't already know they're nacelles, even though it's a, a turboprop engine, I assume. Okay, so there's 75 millimeters. And then 75 coming up here, 75. So if you're looking for the center of gravity, that's where it is. And yes, this one is awkward to test. I remember that on the old Nemo style. Um, Coast Guard finish looks, which I still think looks sweet, but I gotta say, around the same time, there was a competitive offering that was releasing and it was in a true to scale color scheme and I just thought, oh, that's so gorgeous. But at the same time, I never got that one. <laughs> and I think I'm kind of glad because I saw the way it flew and it was kind of like, eh, really fast. Didn't never slow down. Didn't do the stuff that this thing will do. And by the way, that thing looks sweet. It does look really sweet. So I am really excited to continue with the radio setup next. Now, radio setup on this might entail a little extra for the thrust reverse, okay? So because it's gonna be set up on the NX10, we have channels to spare above and beyond the eight pluggable channels. But just to be clear, there's also the hatch on the back, okay? And then we may need to use the programming device. This is for programming the Avian ESCs so we can set up thrust reverse. Now they have made it easy to mark or made it easy to find right here and here. Mm -hmm. Throttle one, throttle two, okay? But which one's which? Does Shouldn't matter. matter. Okay. 
But the point is, what I'm trying to say is, which one's one, which one's two? I get this all the time in the industrial world. Yeah, sell one, sell two. O okay, what does that mean? There's a left and a right. There's a starboard and a port. There's, you know, I mean, what is it? Is it the front, the back, left, right? So in this case, it's just one and two. So you have to do the math and figure it out. Um, but you are setting them the same. So shouldn't be that big a deal. Just wanted to point that out. All right, so radio setup in this model is gonna be just like every other time we do radio setup. We have to start by having a model created. Okay, so a profile, right? And a profile is built into the model, okay? And so I'm gonna hit cancel and back, and I'm gonna go add new, okay. And then we have this model, Acro, and we're gonna create. Now, where do we know how to do that? All the way back on like page one. Yep. Or two. It's actually technically page three, but like the first page you open to, okay? So, Oh wait, no, Turn this off. is where it talks about the batteries though. Yep. You can actually find this on 3S, good lordy lord, that's small. Yeah, that's good. Okay. There you go. That's what we're looking for right here, guys. All right, so they've changed the way they laid these out and I'm not sure I'm like a huge fan yet, but it's supposed to be more of like a systematic step-by-step. -step. Okay, so turn on your transmitter, go to system setup, model select, add new model, we already did all that. Okay, and then you wanna do an airplane model type. It's called an Acro. Um, create, and then go to model name. Okay, model name, so we're gonna type in the name, and we'll be right back. All right, so this is the V2, the gray one, All right? Aircraft type, one aileron, one flap, and then next. Select image. Standard image. And then you can scroll through this and find something that makes you happy. I think we did that last time. I'd like somebody to tell us where to import the images though. That'd be kind of handy. I know there's just like an image file somewhere on the root directory of this SD card if you use an SD card. But I'm not sure what the setup is on those files, so. All right, then we've got, uh, what do we need to do? We need to do probably a flight mode. Okay, dual rates and expo. Yeah, I'm not gonna use their setup for that. Dual rates and expo, yep, not gonna do that. So we'll do something, something similar and we'll show you what we're gonna do. Um, okay, so set the values in the flat menu. Gee, 16 and 25%, okay. okay. All right, so then I'm gonna go to channel assign and I'm gonna change this off of uh, B and we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, now we'll go back out. First thing we're gonna do is throttle cut for safety. They even talk about that. Yep, step nine. Okay, good. Oops, highlight, uh, highlight it. Switch H. See, it's locked down. When it's on or when it's off, then you can use your throttle as normal. Then we need to go to dual rates and expo, set up our version, which is gonna be on switch F. So I set it to five, then 10. And you guys have probably seen me do this numerous, numerous, numerous times if you've watched for a while. And to be honest, we just like almost never have to play with it. And so unless we're doing something with a flight controller that's like sort of obscure, we just do the same thing and we almost never have problems with it. And it just gives me a similar feel on most of the planes. And then you're just kind of seeing the difference between the planes, okay? So that's where I'm gonna start. Got a little bit more or a little bit less, okay? And that's true for all three of the control axis, the primary control axis being pitch, yaw, and roll. So pitch, of course, by the elevator, yaw by the rudder, and then roll by the ailerons. All right, so we'll start there. We'll be able to get out of jail free card if we need to. All right, so then we got to set up a flap system. I want it set on switch B. And they want for zero, zero. For 50 is minus 50. Okay. And then minus 100. So we're wasting half the throw. That's unusual. We might have to address that at some point. So we're going to do a 25% flap to elevator correction. 
Okay, so 16, we're gonna set this to two. Okay, all right. So we're set on that. They told us to use switch D, I use switch B. Sorry, just minor difference of opinions. Now, I use G to turn on safe and turn off safe, but we'll have to address that later. And then I'll use switch G for thrust reverse, provided we actually do that. And at this point, I have no reasons to think what. You use A for safe on off. I use A. You said G. I said G and I meant gear. Mm -hmm. I said G for thrust reverse? Yes. Okay, my bad. So this is normally assigned to gear, but it's switch A. This is switch G and I'll use that for thrust reverse. Thank you for catching that. Mm -hmm. My apologies guys for the confusion. All right, so now the next thing I need to do is timer. Do they have a recommended time on this? Probably not. not anymore. They kind of stopped putting timers in and that's okay because really it's gonna be such a various difference. Uh-oh. Oh, it says included equipment. Okay, good. I was like, uh oh, is the cargo door optional? So where's the cargo door? I think it said to do that on the gear switch, actually, if you go a couple more pages. Really? Here. Always confirm the center of gravity remains within acceptable limits when adding and dropping cargo. Okay. Adjust travel, adjust the tra channel five travel so the servo is not overdriven trying to close the door. If the servo is trying to move the door past closed, it may cause excess draw and could cause a BEC failure. So I guess we'll address that later, but I do want to make an assignment for that. So they're saying that's on the landing gear switch. Channel five. So I'm going to set the timer to like six minutes to start. Anything over 25 is going to start the timer. And just because I like having a timer, I'm used to it. It doesn't mean it's necessary, but you know, it is what it is. Personal preference on this one. So I want a uh, voice. And then expiration, I want tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. So we have a one minute warning, one minute remaining, and then 10, nine, eight, seven, and the slowest possible count yes. you can do. <laughs> okay, and then telemetry will auto populate. Audio events should auto populate. Bind would be the next thing, but I do need to be careful about this. So channel five is already designated to switch G. So normally I would put safe on or AS3X on, and if I don't, if I have landing gear, I always assign the landing gear here, okay? I wanna warn you about something. If you're used to retracts being attached here, you're gonna respond with retracts attached here. Why is that a problem? When you roll this plane, you're gonna be going like this and you may drag your door. Mm, if you open accidentally. Yep. So if you do a premature roll and you've got that door down, you'll drag it. So be mindful of that. Also, you don't want to accidentally close your gear like you're used to or retract your gear or pull them up by doing that. So in my case, I am going to go ahead and assign safe here and then I'm going to make switch C the drop function. Okay. Okay. So one, this will be all the way closed. This will be halfway open and then all the way open. Okay. So we'll address that right now by going to system setup. Disconnect RF, channel assign. Normally gear is channel A. I'm gonna make that, or not, gear is channel five, switch A. I'm gonna make it switch C. I don't know which direction it's gonna operate, so we'll find out here in a minute. Okay. Okay. So speaking of not knowing how it's gonna operate, we should be okay, because I don't think it goes and touches the ground, but on a roll, you will sweep this, okay? So just be aware of that. We have the center of gravity marked, and we should be ready to go ahead and bind but we are gonna have to do a little bit more for thrust reverse, according to the manual. Now, I'm hoping that our manual is an early revision that has been updated where we can do it through the menu, like we did on the twin timber, okay? On the twin timber, we, it was the first time we could update thrust reverse with a controller on a plane with mm -hmm. two SCs. Very good. Okay, so throttle cuts on. How do we protect ourselves from these big, huge human hand choppers? First of all, we test the plane to validate whether or not we trust it, A. B, I'm gonna use a battery that I can lay in here very easily. It's just a 4S pack. I'm not gonna fly it like this. It's just for radio setup. So I'm gonna put it in here. Very big, high quality straps. The good kind actually made of thick fabric, which I like a lot. 
We are gonna put some shelf liner in there too, but it looks like that's already broke on mine or it's on the way to breaking. That plywood, they like to break when you pull tight. So that's why the shelf liner really helps. Oh, and by the way, oh buddy, wait until you get a load of this massive roll of shelf liner, <laughs> easy liner. If you didn't get your Mother's Day gift for your mother in your life, shelf liner. You should not have gotten her that. Put it in the shelf liner drawer and then use it relentlessly for your models. If you get your mother shelf liner, it should only be because you like cleaned out all of her kitchen cabinets. That when would be a good shelf liner. you put it back trip. in, you put shelf liner in. Then you can get the star for the day. Yes, yes. otherwise. Let's talk about how to install shelf liner. It's really complicated. <laughs> But did you happen to know that you got shelf liner that matches our cats? <laughs> you weren't expecting that, I could tell. <laughs> we, we've had people accuse us of getting cats to match our furniture and stuff. Yes. Which we didn't, we I didn't. promise you. Although they kind of do actually match our decor. Yes. They match this plane nicely. Do you remember when we had our kittens and yeah. we were doing the EC? <laughs> and I was like, we should test the door with the cats. We didn't we say didn't that. We didn't do that. We didn't do that at all. No. But it would have been awesome. We have a little, didn't we have a little parachuter guy? Yeah, we do. And we still have them and we'll use them. So anyway, okay, we've got this thing. It's going to go in here. And then there's this one obnoxious wire here. I don't even know what that goes to. Probably the cargo door. See this one? Oh. It's really ticking me off because that should not come up there. I need that spot. So I got to unplug you, you little turd. And then I'm going to feed you through where you belong right there. Oh. I need to get my forceps, one of my favorite tools. So folks, hopefully you're watching this video and thinking, you know, Brian, you bring up a lot of good points. I should have done that for Mother's Day. And yes, your cats do match <laughs> your couch. Or maybe if you enjoy the content and you think, hey, you know, you put a lot of effort into this. It doesn't really look like it, but, you, <laughs> but we know you probably time. behind the scenes, behind the scenes you do. Um, so if you're, intelligent enough to understand how awesome the time investment is and you say hey brian you're doing a good job keep up the good work you're not afraid to take one for the team and show us a crash once in a while and maybe badmouth the people that send you repeatedly airplanes because you didn't like a sticker yes we appreciate you thank you for doing that because we're screaming from home we hated that sticker get to the get to the radio setup brian What's taking you so long? We're almost done with the radio setup, dude. Come on, dude. Calm down. Come on, man. I've only got like six more minutes left on my term. They're gonna send me home. That's not what I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make me re-offend just so I can stay in here. Uh, anybody who doesn't know who that is, that character is our prisoner. Uh, which, uh, yeah, that is our prisoner yeah, now, evidently. I guess, yes. evidently. Our prisoner is really, really loves watching Brian Phillips RC. And he's on the radio setup. Yeah, he's like, man, well, I really love that radio setup. It gets me going every time. It's one of the few things I can do in here in the slammer and then make, make toilet wine too. It's great, man, toilet wine. I've really refined that stuff. It's great. So for any of you guys in prison watching, thank you for being part of our YouTube channel. Um, if you, if you want to figure out the conversion rate for cigarettes to Patreon dollars and then have somebody on the outside you can, uh, you can be a Patreon too. Just uh, set it up with your uh, friends on the outside. Anyway, for those of you who have still lots of time left on your term, don't worry, the video's not over yet. Yes. And there's more coming, I promise. So if you wanna help support Brian Phillips RC and our shenanigans, we appreciate you being here with us and we will let you do it. The way you can do it is buy things from the links predominantly. Um, secondly, the way you can support us is by literally watching the videos, yep. That's a big part of it because YouTube seems to think that long format is not what people want. They would just prefer to, you know, spend their time pooping watching shorts. Yeah, you could watch like a whole video. It's way more educational. That's right. I could. Well, I don't know. Maybe two. Maybe yes. Two, I two am videos? A I am a man. Yes. There's God knowing. God knows how long it will take in there. So I'm just going to look at this. Now, I never know which way it's going to go. This is Velcro from another plane. I can never tell, is it the fuzzy side or the pokey side that would normally go on a battery? I think it's the, the fuzzy, fuzzy side. side. The fuzzy side goes on the battery? Yes. The well, loose. it does in this case. 
I hate putting Velcro on my batteries, but I do it occasionally when there's a plane that has to be. Should have made you a shirt for Joan All that says, I hate putting Velcro on my batteries. It's not Velcro, it's hook and loop. Hook and loop. Come on now. It's not trademarked. Come on now. What do you think this is? What do you think this is, a Spartan? Come on, it just looks like it could be, maybe. It's not actually one. Okay, so you're putting the hook side down. Yes, I am. Okay. Amazing. Look at that perfect fit. Wow. Now, you're like, hey, Brian, get to the radio setup, first of all. But second of all, why didn't, why didn't you put your shelf liner straight on there? Well, the reason we didn't do that, Mr. Prisoner Man, is because uh, the shelf liner, uh, it, when I glue it down, which I, I have been known to do, I, I know, I do it sometimes. The reason I do it sometimes, it is easier to just lay this down onto the shelf liner and then you can hack around it a lot you easier. refuse to do it but, that well, way. Well, no, I don't refuse to do it. It's just still, it's, it's in a roll. I can't just roll these things up with no effort and then hold them. For those of you old enough to understand what I'm talking about. You just don't do it that way because I suggested it. No, I would do it that way if this was already cut. If this was cut in a flat sheet, which we probably should cut one yeah. and put it in there. And then I'll just grab that out each time, like what we did for the last 14 years. Because honestly, like this is enough. This is enough to do like four or 5,000 airplanes. You can, yeah. you can organize your wife's kitchen and still not ever need to buy a shelf liner also, for your planes. But I'm, I really appreciate you buying the kind that matches this plane perfectly. I thought gray seemed more appropriate than it, it was. peach or whatever peach? the other color choice was. Man, I don't know. Pink is my favorite color, uh, says yeah. Aerosmith. All right, we're going to just put this four. This is a 4S 2200. With and yes, Velcro on it. What? With Velcro on it. Well, that's like super fine Velcro. I don't even think that would work. But it doesn't matter. We need the shelf liner in there so that it can hold the battery. You see, I've got one like loosely held on. You see how stiff that is? That's what you want, guys. All right, so real quick, we were talking about how do we protect ourselves from things that are outside of our control? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you do your best. You make the offer. You hope they read it. And when they don't read it and they get all butt hurt and run away like little petulant babies, then this happens. What were we talking about again? <laughs> I thought we were talking about something else. Props, I got confused. Proper props. Tea. Props. Props. Sorry. Get me back on topic, camera crew. So what happens is you try to protect yourself from things by taking the precautions. And you're like, but Brian, why'd you put your props on? Man, I've caught myself a million times in prison here. <laughs> well, if you're cutting yourself, stop putting the props on. I have cut myself one time and it was on that plane right there, yes. Aero Commander. Mm -hmm. That thing has been dusty and in a beautiful corner of our office. The camera crew just recently got a new desk and you're like, Brian, get to the radio setup. I'm about to, oh, I'm having problems here. It's not a folding table now. Yeah, it's awesome. Really nice. Okay, so we're gonna plug this in. How do you protect yourself? Don't put your hands on these while it's starting. That's step one. Step two, my throttle cuts on you. Like, ah, it's not gonna matter. You don't have a radio setup set up. You're right. I don't, Mr. Prisoner. We are gonna plug it in and we're gonna vet it. Now, what, what happens to a plane that has thrust? It goes forward. It's gonna run into me unless the thrust reverse is all messed up and it goes backward. And then in which case I'm gonna hold on to it. So I am gonna secure the plane. A. B. I'm gonna make sure the transmitter is not in the way of the prop. Two. And then C. I'm gonna make. Yes. <laughs> I know. That was on purpose. All right, C, I'm gonna make sure that it's bound. Once we vetted the system, then we're gonna trust the system because you're not pulling these props off every time. I hate to break it to you. For you naysayers, naysayers, I don't have any fresh wounds, all I'm gonna say. All right, you ready? And by the way, wouldn't it be just like, oh, see, I told you you'd cut yourself, right? I hope I don't cut myself. I don't hope you guys cut yourself. Okay, on you go. All right, so it's currently on, just listening to singing songs. Beep, beep. Now I'm gonna press this button. Boop. I didn't press it long enough. I'm gonna press it longer. Oh, now it's flashing. Wow, it's flashing. Oh boy, it's getting dangerous now. Whoa, buddy. Bind. Bind. Okay, get your hands on it, ready to go. Boom. Auto config, auto config. All right, great. Now, what's the first thing we're gonna do? Throttle cut is currently on. I am holding this thing. It doesn't look like it, but if that was on full throttle, I could stop it because I would respond in time. I would probably have to let the battery die, okay? 
But there's throttle cut. I'm gonna shut the throttle cut off first. I'm gonna look for a jump. It has only done that like twice the whole time we've done this. Throttle cut is off. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, sounds delicious. So balanced. Differential thrust, I love you. Okay, now, throttle cuts back on and tested. I now trust this plane to perform based on my switch conditions, that thing, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully install this and I'm still gonna respect the props because they're sharp and I don't wanna get cut, okay? So what's our next step? We have to start control surface adjustments if necessary, which I don't think they will be. Because the last time I made in one of these, I spent like hours getting all these controls perfect and then guess what happened? They were wrong. I flew it and put them all back to the way they were. Yep. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. How come your flaps don't move, Brian? It's because I put that stick thing, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Take off flaps, landing flaps, gorgeous. Now look, look at the tailpipe here, whoa. Oh yeah, we gotta slow that down ASAP, it looks so dumb. Okay, so click, servo setup, travel, speed. And we're on uh, gear down. Do that? Yeah, watch this. Whoops, sorry. So on the way down, I want it to be like five seconds. On the way up, I want it to be like, one second, okay? Oh yeah, that's so cool! So now I'm gonna go to five seconds and I'm gonna make it like two seconds. So up in a hurry. I think that needs to be three seconds. That is so sweet, gotta love it. Now, the other thing you might wanna do is you might wanna put a magnet on here and we do need to quickly inspect if we're mechanically bound, okay? So this is what we're gonna do next. Oops. I feel like, okay, so watch this. I'm gonna go to speed, highlight it, and go back to sub trim. Well, I'll go to travel. I'm in that position, so now watch. Now it's opened. See how it's open? I'm just gonna scroll. See, that's overdriving the heck out of it. See, as soon as it starts moving, Two, we're at 90, 91, 92, 93. Good enough, okay? Now, also, watch this. Servo setup, travel. Watch this, watch this. Boom, now watch this. 100. Oh yeah, all the way down. 150%, baby. and perfect closure every time. All right, elevator up, elevator down. Now, look at this. That doesn't look like it lines up perfectly, does it? You know why? Look, it's about what? Say three degrees down? Mm -hmm. Look, right here, show them that, like from the side. See what I'm talking about there, guys? Mm -hmm. Guys and gals? Look, right here. Boom, three millers. Millers, give them three millers. Okay, so I'm gonna call that not three millers, and I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Good enough. We'll trim it out later. Okay. All right, now why am I saying that? I normally would not say that, but I've been bit by the snake that is the EC1500 on the last time I reviewed it. Okay, take off flaps, landing flaps. That looks absolutely amazing. Okay, everything looks good there. All right, so now throttle cut is on. I'm just gonna scroll over and just do a little checking before we use this thing to see if thrust reverse is already working. It's supposed to be defaulted on channel seven. So if I scroll over, is anything on seven right now? That's three. No, throttle cuts we on. we inhibited aux two. We did? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go, just for fun, system set up. See, it just jumped up, did you see that? That means this is actually down from the neutral, but this one's up higher than that. I do not like that. How the heck is that adjusted? 
Mm. That's not cool. I didn't even think about that. All right, let's look. Is there a way to adjust it? Uh, verify the sub trims. Beware of the push rod bottoming out and the ball linkage. Don't, okay. Well, where the heck do you adjust it at? They don't even talk about how do you adjust this. It's gotta be inside of there somewhere. Okay, good luck getting that adjusted. I'm just gonna go with it's not adjustable for now. All right, oh. Hold on, let's open the poop chute. Oops, I'm in this. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a sec. Um, all right, sorry guys, jumping around a little bit here. Model name, channel assign. Let's go ahead and assign channel auxiliary two to G, J, okay. That was my rudder making that weird noise. Oh, steerable, is the steerable working? Yes, it is, yes, it is, yes, it is. Okay, so elevator, ailerons, steerable. Okay, good. Now we can do this. We can go digital switch setup. Now, normally I would not cheat and just tell you, but I already know what it is because I just did this like a million times. Minus 100 should be reverse or should be forward thrust. That's where I want minus 100. Then you don't want to leave it floating. So this one's gonna be plus 100, which should be reverse thrust. Hey, don't you, don't you count out loud to me. She, she's trying to interrupt me. And she, now she's vibrating like crazy. She's all pissed off. Did you hear it? That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> we made the sound, the sound card puke. Awesome. Okay, so here we are. There's our thrust reverse if it's on. It could be on. I hope it's not. But if it is, I'm going to grab the tail section here. I'm in normal mode. Throttle cut is off. Should be forward thrust. Oh, yes, it is. Now watch this. Nope, doesn't change. Now, that's good. That means that we didn't get one that's already been set up because I don't want to cheat here. I want you guys to see how to do this. So the next move is scroll all the way over and see if it's settable. Oh, please lie. Please be liars. Okay, we got to plug it in. We're going to try it. We're going to be the first to share how to do it the wrong way, not according to the manual. By the way, I just want to point out, where do you grab to open this thing up? Uh, where the props are going to Right be? in the chop suey zone. Yeah. Okay. So one thought I had was like, you know, it could be a little buzzy and annoying. I do it all the time. And I know some of you guys are just cringe when I do it, but I just, I got to, you know, I know it doesn't seem like it because I'm almost flying at my house and stuff, but uh, you know, on 23 acres with surrounded by another 50 acres in all directions. Well, yeah. Super dangerous stuff. But anyway, what I was gonna say is I'm gonna take that risk right now and I'm gonna make it the last time I have to do it. Okay, folks, so now I'm gonna just stick this right in y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get that like perfectly square. Oh, for goodness sakes. So right here. Oh yeah, look at that fancy dance right there. Okay, so there's that. Okay, and there's that. Beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got that. Now, if you do it just right, you can make it so it doesn't stick up and doesn't buzz and stuff, okay? Look, oh, I don't have to put my fingers into the pinch point. The bite zone. All right, you wanna come over here and we'll do this in a way that is safe and effective. And I'm gonna put the tape and the canopy or hood or whatever you wanna call that, the top half over there. Same thing with this. All right, we need to be ready to do this menu. It's gonna disappear and that's what we want, disappear. Turn it on. I'm gonna scroll back over. So step one, throttle low. Up elevator, left aileron. Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're waiting for five to 10 seconds. Oh, it's gonna let us in. <laughs> left aileron. Remember how we had problems with this last mm -hmm. time? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, That's so awesome. The first one works. So the first one. what I was just gonna say is we got an old manual. 
So no, you probably don't need to use this. Yes, because nobody wants to use that thing, really, after all. Uh, let's get, make it work. Brake disabled. Oh, it's gonna work. Ah, oh, I clicked. Dang it. Okay, so hold on. So I got, okay, I gotta be safe here. Unplug. Okay, back up. Sorry guys, use the sticks to do it, not the clicker. That is an honest mistake, folks. I apologize. Wait for the initiation. Step one. Step two. Get over here a little bit more there. Okay. So then we're gonna go left. Now remember, just do this here. Disabled, proportional, disabled, proportional, disabled, hmm. FW? What's that? Thrust reverse, channel seven. Rudder reverse? No. There's channel seven. Is there a way to change it? Should be changing when I do that. Rudder reverse. Differential. 10% default exit. Hmm. I don't ever, s I didn't see anything in there that said. It's always in that. Okay, so now I need to go. That's another reboot, so we should be able to go right in. Okay. Then step three is gonna be, we're just gonna to go to the right. Okay, so brake disabled. Oh, maybe it's just brake type normal. Brake type proportional. Reverse, what the heck? Okay, so reverse. Brake force, I have no idea what the brake force is supposed to be. Did it say it in the manual? I don't remember reading it. We'll go back into the left and try it again. Because truthfully, what happens is, does it say anything about what brake force is supposed to be? I can't remember where that was. Mm, haven't seen it yet. Camera crew thinks it's at the back. We can only turn one page at a time the same, same direction. Uh, smart USC. If it doesn't say, then brake force is zero. Press reversing. Okay. What brake force? Brake force. Seven. Okay. So brake force is seven. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Then we're going to go down, down, down. Down, 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 exit with save. Okay, so now we're going back in. We're going to go to left this time again. We did have to do this twice last time, remember? Because mm -hmm. it was weird. So waiting for step three. All these serial controlled things like this are sometimes a little bit weird. Disabled, normal, 
proportional reverse. Booyah, there it is, break four seven. All right, guys, so what's the moral of the story? If at first you don't succeed. Just keep trying until right, something yeah. catches on fire. Oh, I, I screwed it up. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to scroll back over to the normal mode. We're just going to quickly con control the plane. Throttle cuts on. Tested. Forward. Oh, yeah. That's going forward. You can see dust and crap going. Oh, yeah. Differential thrust still works. Oh, that is so sweet. And there's forward and differential thrust still works. So guys, the moral of the story is no joking, just total genuineness from Brian Phillips RC is that this hobby has lots of different barriers to entry. And one of those barriers is patience for equipment. If I could have more patience for people, it'd probably be better in my life but I have lots of patience for equipment. I don't know how that worked out, but it's maybe because that's what I do for a living. But what I am gonna say is this, this plane is literally ready except for safe. So let's talk about that last, okay? So safe, if you're using safe, first of all, this is a uh, level two, difficulty level two, as in not one or three, but two. So that means like intermediate to experienced pilots. Take it for what it's worth. All I'm gonna say is this thing was safe, probably is not a terrible place to be, for a beginner-ish pilot, but I'm not gonna say it's easy, and I'll update my theory on that when we go fly it, okay? So that being said, let's just say, when you have a, a performance plane, you get in trouble quick, but generally you have power to get back out of trouble. The trouble is when you're new, you just tend to get into trouble worse with more performance. So performance, speed, and power saves planes' lives, but they also kill planes. So it's kinda like, you know, you want a fast car so you can merge with traffic, right? But you don't want to be going like 400 miles an hour when you merge with traffic going 60, okay? Hopefully that answers all your questions. Definitely. Deep wisdom on Brian Phillips RC. Okay, so we obviously have AS3X and SAFE going. Let's go ahead and click. Let's scroll down to forward programming, connecting. It's not even gonna go in. Oh, yes it will. Okay, gyro settings, AS3X settings. Save select. We're gonna turn, it's already on aux two. I don't want that. Nope. It's on now. But aux two is special reverse. We don't want it on gear either. We don't want it on flap. What do we want it on? Aux three? Because listen, we already used, it's gonna be aux three. So now what we need to do is we need to walk out of that menu and go down to system set up, disconnect RF and then go to the channel assignments, and then go to aux three and change it from right knob to switch A. In our case, I want switch A to operate safe, okay? That's my rule, guys. My rule is retracts or safe select if it's equipped, okay? So if you don't have either, then you can do something else on that channel. But just make your own set of rules, follow your own rules, and then you'll know what to expect each time you fly a different plane. Okay, this is hilarious. We have a hummingbird here on the, the gong tool. And then over here we have, what is this? That's a Baltimore Oriole. A Baltimore Oriole eating the hummingbird food, right? No, that's for, the, that's for them. Oh, I think it's hilarious because it's like roll reversal. It's grape jelly. It's grape jelly. Okay, so anyway, all right, getting back to the point here, guys. Sorry. Brian, get to the radio setup. I'm dying here. My wine's almost done. I don't see birds in prison. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You should enjoy the birds. Nature. All right, so we are gonna go set safe select again. Yes, you can jump back into forward programming. It should already be set, but let's just see what it says. Gyro settings, safe select. So aux three, safe is on. Currently, it says off. But when it's back here, it says on, okay? So I want safe to be off until it's in this position. So it should be currently on, okay? Now, you can go here and try to scroll and change things, but it's not gonna change things. Okay, 
See what I'm saying? You can turn off AS3X if you're weird. Like, why would you want AS3X off? Well, maybe you're running a sailplane. But anyway, there you go. All right? If you do a three position, you can actually have three modes. One would be AS3X off, AS3X on, and save on with AS3X, right? So now we walk out. Now I'm gonna go in here, click, scroll, travel, reverse, gear, okay? Okay, that didn't work. You need to reverse. Sorry, Ox. not gear, aux three. My apologies, folks. There we go. Okay, so now when I am in safe, you will notice that there is less play, less travel, okay? When I'm in safe, there's less travel, see? The other way to tell is to flip it over. First thing I'm gonna do is test my throttle. Throttle is good, it's not gonna start. I can flip this over on its tail. I have it in safe now. The way to tell is to flip it over on its belly or on its back and look at the ailerons trying to find the quickest route to level. Now, look at the elevator. The elevator is pointed up trying to level the aircraft. Now that it's level, it's level. Now it's trying to level the aircraft by bringing the nose down, okay? I'm gonna turn that off. Now you can flip it on its back and it doesn't care. Okay, very good, right? So this plane is ready to fly, guys. It's ready to fly. All you need is a couple of hours to do everything start to finish, including the decals, which were a bit of a pain, but I think they look really good. So super happy. I was gonna be really, 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 really bummed if there was that shiny, slick crap, but these are really good decals. So I'm really happy about that. And even the branding was cool enough that I put it on there. I normally don't even do that on these liveries that are so cool, but I just thought, you know, what the heck? Might as well put the ejector seats on there. That is so cool. Yes, that's an ejection seat warning. I don't even know if they have an ejector seat. Your mic is gonna die. My mic is gonna die. Okay, well in that case, guys, help support us. Buy these things from the links in the video description below. You really will help us. Probably the best way to help us. It's gonna be huge. If you don't wanna help us that way because you're in Europe or something like that, we just had this happen this week, became a Patreon. So thank you, you know who you are. I try not to call out names unless you ask me to. And uh, they can't buy them from the links because they have European links. And so they just decided to support us on Patreon. So thanks, that's super cool. Uh, but really the best way to support us is buy these planes when you see one that you like, buy the transmitters when you see something that we helped you with or whatever. And then we get a pat on the back from the companies. You don't pay any extra. You get your RC bucks and bonuses and, and discounts, or whatever coupon codes, all that stuff still goes. It still works. We just get a little kickback, which is nice. And that's how we fund our channel. So we hope you guys will do it. And that keeps us in business. Now, the other thing too is, if you just can't, we got the Patreon and we have PayPal one time. But just remember, we're friends and family. Who wants to give an extra 20% to PayPal? Not me, not you, nobody. So we're friends. Also, if you just can't stomach any of those three options, there is super thanks if you wanna support us financially. But if you're just all about like, hey, we love the video, don't have any money to give you right now, I'm totally broke because I have a habit, an addiction. <laughs> I get where you're coming from. Just smash a like, definitely subscribe, click the bell for notifications and come back for all the new content on Brian Phillips RC, where we bring it to you with no BS. It's not the biggest, it's not the fastest, it's not the best. It is what it is. And we'll show you exactly what that is on this channel. And we hope you enjoy it. So thanks for watching.